Hey everybody, Aaron with Software Zero to Hero coming to you. Uh, this is going to be our next video in our Sphinx documentation tutorial. Last time we set up our WSL uh, Windows, Windows subsystem Linux environment, and then the next steps that we took in the second video was installing Sphinx and getting everything ready to use it on our system. And then at the very final steps, we created our first Sphinx document with its naming, uh, incorporation, versioning, everything like that, where we had that all set up, and that's where we left off. So today we're going to take off on the actual implementation of Sphinx and working with the documentation as well. So first things first, with that Windows Subsystem Linux environment, you need to go ahead and activate that if you're using PowerShell or you're on a Windows operating system. So let's go ahead and get that started. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and look into our listing of everything that we have. And you can see right over here, we have Sphinx for that directory that we created. So let's go ahead and clear this out. And we're going to go ahead and CD right into that Sphinx documentation. And once we have that, let's look into the listing of there. And we have the readme file and then the test file that we created as well. So let's go ahead and CD into test. And now once we're into test, you can open that and list it as well. And you can see that there's a build directory, a virtual environment that we created last time as well. And then our source directory and then that make.bat file too. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and start our virtual environment. And if you haven't created that already, make sure to do so. Go back to the second video in the tutorial environment, and then you can actually look and see how you set up that virtual environment for Sphinx before you get everything going with it. So we're going to go ahead and activate that environment. So we had it source, and then we named the environment env last time. So it would be backslash bin backslash activate. And now that we have that going, you can see that it is active over here with the env inside the quotation marks, which on that last video, it showed that explanation too to test to make sure that your environment is up and running. So we do have that going now. So the next step is we're going to look into the different portions of our file to start editing it and making some actual documentation. So if you go ahead and CD into the source directory and list on there, you'll see that there is a static directory, templates, a conf.py file, and then the index.rst. The conf.py file is the directory where everything is built around a Python code, and that file holds the meat and potatoes of your, of your whole documentation with your extensions, your naming conventions, uh, resources, directories, everything like that, that you direct over into different areas. But the main part that you're actually going to be writing in is the RST file, which it will be like a markdown language on steroids when we come into that. So let's go ahead and open up that RST file. All right, so we have it open and up in right here in our command line, which I'm just showing this really quick to you, and then I'll show you another step for that as well. So you have that opened up within your command line, and you can see that that index file is a test project documentation master file. This is going to be the main file that everything goes off of when your page and your whole documentation is built, which you can change that to in that conf.py file. And then you'll see that it says, welcome to test projects documentation. That's a standard header that they put on there for the titling of everything on your documentation. And then you'll see right below that, there's a talk tree. And the talk tree is pivotal because you have to have at least a talk tree in one of the files that you're pointing to. It's basically telling Sphinx about the hierarchy of the page contents, the documentation, and any pages that are linking over to it. So within that index file, it's typically best to keep it on there uh, just so you have that. And then below that, you'll see another header that says indices and tables with different references to the general index and the uh, modular index and searches too. That's just a standard boilerplate that comes with that. You can actually take that off or modify it or just leave it on there if you would like to. Mm. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to get in and we're going to go ahead and exit out of this with escape.qa. Now that we're out of that, I typically tell people that use uh, the, the text editor of your choice. I like Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up with code space dot and it's going to go ahead and pull that up right there with that file too. That's one of the reasons I really like it as well. 
and let's go ahead and close out of all those and you'll see right over here under the file explorer it has the source that's open and then you'll have everything within that conf.py file as well now if we wanted to the better aspect of it would be to cd back out of that into that test directory and just opening up through visual studio code right there so that way you have the whole test directory with the build files the environment source everything like that all in one and that's typically the best way to go to and that's usually how i work with it on my documentation for my job as well so now that we're in there, we can see that there's an index.rst file that we covered already, and you can go in here and you can actually edit this too. So let's go ahead and change the first thing. Uh, anything that is a header, it actually has a hierarchy of the way you're supposed to label underneath it. And your largest header, your header number one, is always going to be equal signs. And it has to be at least the minimum length of what the words are above it. I typically try to go one past that and try to keep to that standard form on all of my headers and any kind of titling that I do within my Sphinx documentation as well. So let's go ahead and change that too. Now that you can actually shorten that back up too to just make it look a little bit better. And then with this talk tree, you'll have everything staying the same right there on this. So we have that taken care of. So the next step that we're going to do, let's actually go ahead and open up a terminal too. Oh, there it is. That way we can just be working through everything in, in VS Code. So we're gonna have to open that virtual environment again. Now that we have that going, we can look into this and you can see that we have a build file over here. And when we set up Sphinx, when we were installing it and doing all the configurations, making that quick start file, uh, we set it up to where build and source would be separate. I usually like doing that just to keep everything a little bit more organized in their own directories. And it's easier to find everything instead of just jumbled up all under one single build directory. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to make our first HTML file for this. So with that, you're going to type in make HTML. And it's going to go ahead and run Sphinx like this and go through everything. And then at the end, it should say that HTMLs are in the build.html file. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our actual file itself too. And we're gonna go over here and we're going to get into this Sphinx documentation and look under the build for it too. So now you can see that that's all underneath the build file there. So if we go ahead and click on that index, you're gonna go ahead and have it pop up to where it uh, states the name over here on this directory bar. And this is navigation and quick search. And then it'll say, welcome to the test projects documentation. And then with those indices and tables too, which this looks, you know, okay like this as well. And this is the standard Alabaster theme that they have installed on Sphinx, which we'll get into later detail on implementing different themes within the actual documentation as well. So now we're going to go back to Visual Studio Code there and take a look at our talk tree. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new page itself. So if you click on this source because you want to keep all your RST files together, you're going to go ahead and click on that and click new file. And we're going to say page1.rst. Now that we have that page1.rst, we want to make sure that we have a title in here because it won't link anything. Even if the page is blank, it has to at least have a title in order for it to save correctly and for Sphinx to actually build those HTML files too. So we're going to write, this is our first Sphinx page. And let's go ahead and underline that too to make sure that we have everything on there for that titling. And underneath that, we can write, this is our first attempt at writing Sphinx documentation. So we have that now. So let's go ahead and save that file. And we're going to come back here over to the index.rst. So under these talk trees, you're going to have different labels on here. And you can create multiple talk trees too. So don't 
just think you have to put everything under here. So we're going to put this under part one for the name. And with part one for the name, that way we'll have everything listed on there correctly. And we can go through and you know change whatever we like. And we can make different indices on there too. So part one of the directory, we're going to go ahead and put that on here. And we're going to tab over and put in page one. I wish I could type today. That was kind of embarrassing right there. All right, so now that we have page one, we can go ahead and save everything there. And then let's go back down here and we're going to make those HTMLs again, make that same call. And once we do that, we'll have everything built up on there and we can look at our second page through our whole file system here. So now there, we can go back in and we can open back up to uh, the make HTML through the index. And you can see that now it has a listing of part one. This is our first Sphinx page. And over here on the navigation too, you can see that it has part one as well. And then it has the, this is our first Sphinx page listed underneath that. So if you click on that, it goes to our next page, which is this is our first Sphinx page, which it doesn't look too much different from the first one, but it is a directory, so you can go back and forth like you're making a, a whole website with different pages involved with it. So let's go back over here and let's go ahead and edit into page one here. So there's a few things that we should be able to do. So one of the main things that I use is bulleted lists, which you can do a bulleted list with a nested bullet inside of that as well. So we're going to put first... Sorry, you start with that asterisk and then a space. First, we built a Sphinx document. Next, we built our HTML pages. Now we have two bullets like that and we can go ahead and tab in and do another asterisk and space and we can put, we built them with the make HTML command. So let's go ahead and save that here, which I don't have to go up through save here. I'm just showing you on there as well. So let's go ahead and remake those HTML pages. Go ahead and go back in here so we have our index page that we opened up and then our sphinx first page too so now we have a bulleted list where we have two bullets and then we have a nested bullet within that second bulleting on there too and it shows everything on there now this is a pretty basic way of documenting items on here and it's the majority of what i typically use is bulleted lists and images and other embedding of stuff which we'll get into later but this is a first basic idea of how to build that Sphinx page. So it is a good start to it. And we'll get into the next videos and I will show you how to embed images and use other extensions and change the theme as well. So make sure to tune in for those other videos and make sure to like and subscribe to Software Zero to Hero. Thank you all for watching.